I have been with my fiance for seven years now, and I have two sons from a previous relationship. They are 12 and eight years old. Their father stopped taking them in 2020 for reasons unknown, and around maybe a year ago is when this started happening. My fiance overrules me. There's been a few times where I've told the boys they can do something or have something, like one of my personal snacks, and he will overrule me. If the boys say, mom said I could, he has said about three times now, well, I said no. I ended up sitting down and communicating that I'm 100% not okay with that. It did lead to a fight about six or so months ago, and things did get better after that. However, two days ago, I told my oldest that he didn't need snow pants on when he went outside because he wasn't playing in the snow. He was just waiting for his friend's mom to pick him up. So we were all just standing outside. Well, my fiance told him to go get his snow pants on because he stepped in the snow briefly to grab a stick. My son said, mom told me I didn't need my snow pants on. And my fiance then says, well, let's add to that and go get your snow pants on. You're going to need them anyways to hang outside with your friend. So just go get them on now with an attitude. As my son is walking off, he says, I was just listening to my mother. And he did absolutely have an attitude about it because he was right. I told him he didn't need them. So I told my fiance, I just told him he didn't need his snow pants. And my fiance just ignored me pretty much, acknowledged what I said, but didn't respond. Well, about a minute later, he followed my son back into the house under the guise of getting a cigarette. My son comes out and tells me, he literally just followed me in there to tell me if I ever talk to him like that again, then I will be grounded. After he left, I pulled my fiance aside and told him that I don't think I can trust him around my kids anymore. Him following my son inside to corner him with the don't speak to me like that or you will be grounded talk really doesn't sit well with me at all. Especially where he was told multiple times that I was the one who told him he didn't need his snow pants, so he should have backed off after realizing that I had already made that decision. But he instead acted like he needed that control and had final say. He's basically saying that I'm being ridiculous, that he's been around for seven years and he's never done anything that would warrant me not trusting him around my kids and that I should see that he is just being a parent. He's texting, saying it wasn't a big deal, that he wanted my son to put his snow pants on and that I apparently have been known to overreact. So he isn't surprised. Am I overreacting? because a part of me is truly just uncomfortable with this whole interaction and him feeling like he can overrule me at all. It feels very controlling. Ide, there has been no wedding planning and I haven't worn my ring in six months since our last fight. For argument's sake, I still use the term fiance, but we haven't proceeded with anything to make me a wife because I've been dragging my feet since our last argument about this and have been on high alert looking for signs of changed behavior before ultimately making the decision whether or not to go forward. And you guys are not understanding my post, I don't think. I told him I can't trust him around my kids two days ago. He is not here currently. I am not choosing him over my kids. Him telling me I'm overreacting is all through text messages. He is currently at his mother's, I believe, but he is not physically here. I guess I'm not understanding how you guys are jumping to the conclusion of me not protecting my children when I've said throughout my post that I've always stepped in and nipped this in the bud while it was happening. I also said in my post that this has only happened three times, four including the snow pants issue. Each time I stepped in and said something with the exception of the snow pants issue because he physically followed my son indoors and I didn't hear it. After I found out, I told him I could not trust him around my kids, and he left, after I told him I needed space. I didn't realize that was an important detail of the post because I wasn't asking for judgment related to him leaving. Stop the nonsense of single moms blah 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 BS. He has a say on everything because I include him in every big important decision regarding the kids. He stopped including me and respecting my role as a parent. I also pay more bills than him because I make more than he does. There's way too many men on this post pulling the yay, 
She doesn't want a dad partner to her kids, don't date single moms, she only wants him to pay the bills card. Ask for info if you're that confused. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I feel so sorry for your kids. It seems like he said things just to show that his words mean more. He is controlling himself now because you aren't married. I cannot imagine what it will be like afterwards. Your sons are caught in the middle and might feel confused. You need to leave this now. I'm sure you will see how much happier they are. Sit down and have an open conversation with the boys alone. Tell them you want their thoughts on how he acts and you won't be sad or upset no matter what they say. This might open your eyes. Comment two. When I was 19, my mom had a boyfriend. This guy told me I wasn't allowed to make myself a sandwich because dinner was two hours away. Mom came home and asked why my mood was down. I told her, like I said, she had a boyfriend. It was not his place to do that, and she had been clear about him not being allowed to parent me. You shouldn't marry this guy. Not the jerk, NTA. Now, for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been a month since my last post, and wow, things have taken some turns. I've been with my fiance for seven years, and we've had our ups and downs, especially when it comes to parenting my two boys from a previous relationship. You might remember the snow pants incident that left me questioning my trust in him around my kids. Well, let me fill you in on what's happened since. After the snow pants debacle, things were tense. My fiance was staying at his mother's place and we were communicating mostly through texts. He kept insisting that I was overreacting, but I couldn't shake the feeling that his need for control was becoming a problem. I mean, he's been a part of our lives for a long time, but that doesn't give him the right to undermine my parenting. So we had a long, hard talk about everything. I brought up the past issues, like the times he overruled me on small things, which might seem minor, but were part of a bigger pattern. I reminded him of the time I let the boys have one of my special snacks, and he stepped in to say no. It was about respect, and I needed him to see that. He finally opened up about feeling like he didn't have a real place in the family. He admitted that he sometimes felt more like an outsider than a parent, especially since I make more money and pay more bills. It was a side of him I hadn't fully understood before. He felt like he had to assert himself to be taken seriously, which is why he'd been overstepping. We both knew we had to find a middle ground. The compromise? We agreed that he would respect my decisions with the boys, but I would also make sure to involve him more in the parenting discussions before any decisions were made. It was about giving him a voice without letting him take over. Things were going okay until last week when my oldest had a school project due. He needed to build a model volcano and my fiance offered to help. I was grateful because work had been crazy for me, but then I overheard them arguing. My son wanted to make the volcano erupt with baking soda and vinegar, but my fiance insisted on using a more complicated chemical reaction he found online. I stepped in, backing up my son's idea because it was his project after all. My fiance was frustrated, but he backed down. It was a small victory, but it showed that our compromise was working. He was trying at least. But then, two days ago, my youngest got into trouble at school for talking back to his teacher. My fiance wanted to ground him for a week, but I thought that was too harsh. We had a heated discussion, and I could see the old patterns starting to emerge. He was slipping back into his old ways of wanting to have the final say. I had to remind him of our agreement, and it was a tough conversation. He was defensive at first, but then he realized he was falling back into old habits. We settled on a three-day grounding with the condition that my son would write an apology to his teacher. The real test came yesterday. My oldest had a soccer game and he scored the winning goal. My fiance was cheering louder than anyone and after the game, he took us all out for pizza. It was like a celebration of not just the goal, but of how far we'd come as a family. But then at the pizza place, my ex, the boy's father, showed up out of the blue. He's been pretty absent since 2020 and seeing him there was a shock. He tried to talk to the boys, but they were hesitant. My fiance stepped in, not to take control, but to support them. He asked my ex to give us space, and surprisingly, my ex backed off, 
On the way home, my fiancé apologized for any times he might have made me feel like he was trying to replace their dad. He said he just wanted to be there for them in whatever way he could. It was a moment that made me see how much he cared, not just about me, but about my boys too. My daughter tries to force a reunion with the woman who assaulted me, so I cut her off, but then a recording exposes the sickening truth. I was 13 when I met Mary, my daughter's mother. She was my older sister's friend from college. I was not in consistent contact with her ever, but she was close enough with my sister that she would spend some holidays at our house. For as long as I knew her, she, to be blunt, sexually attacked me whenever she had the opportunity. I won't go into any details, but it was not a pleasant experience, and I do not look back to my past as if I was in a porno. When I was 16, Mary got pregnant. I found out, and that was the thing that shocked me enough to tell my parents about what was happening. Mary denied everything, and there was a very complicated year or so of legal proceedings that I wasn't involved in much. My parents handled almost everything. The only thing I had to do was give some spit and try not to hurt myself. All I really remember is when it was over, I had a child, Trinity. My parents had fought extremely hard for custody of her and won. My parents never made me parent her or even interact with her. I finished college and by that time, I was more attached to my daughter. We told her that I was her dad when she was six and transitioned into me being her full-time parent. For the last 19 years, I have never seen or interacted with Mary. However, when my daughter was 15, she became curious about her mother. We talked with my parents and decided that she could meet with her mother as long as she was supervised and I wouldn't be involved in any way. We never explicitly told Trinity what happened, just that her mother and I were not friendly and I would never want to interact with Mary. This continued for three years, Trinity and Mary having a minor relationship while I was completely removed from it. When Trinity turned 18, we told her she could meet with her mother when she wanted without supervision. She was an adult and Mary had proven herself a responsible parent as much as she could. With that change, I told Trinity plainly again that her relationship with her mother was never to involve me. I very explicitly warned her that since she was an adult, I would cut her off if she tried to make me and her mother interact. As the title of the post would suggest, Trinity recently tried to set up a surprise reunion between the two of us at her birthday. It was not dramatic in that I broke down then and there, but I told Trinity that I hoped she had a good birthday and left immediately. Now I am contemplating whether I should go through with my promise of cutting her off. Would I be the idiot if I did? Edit. I edited a name mistake. I got confused because these are fake names. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you would be the jerk. She doesn't know why you don't wanna see Mary. She doesn't understand the gravity of the situation. She only knows that you don't wanna see her mom. She probably sees it like you guys had a bad breakup and she wanted to see if you both could get along. You need to tell her what happened to you, as painful as it may be. She is an adult now, so she should be able to understand. If she's fully aware and tries this, yes, cut her off. You can't cut her off without her knowing the full story though. Comment two, I think it was wrong of you to agree to let her meet her mother not tell her all of the information and expect her to understand why you feel as strongly as you do. And she may also be thinking that what her mom did couldn't have been that bad. Otherwise, you wouldn't have let her meet her mom. So I'm actually going to say, you're the jerk because you basically played stupid games and won stupid prizes when it comes to how you mishandled your daughter meeting her mother. Now for the update. Hey everyone. Thanks for sticking around after my last post. I've got an update for you, and let me tell you, it's been a tense few days. After the whole birthday fiasco, things went from bad to worse. Trinity, my daughter, didn't take my departure from her party well. She was hurt, and I get that, but she crossed a line trying to force a reunion with Mary, her mother, and me. I had to stand my ground. The next day, I got a call from my sister, the one who used to be friends with Mary. She was always the protective type, and hearing about the party, she was livid. She reminded me of the times when we were kids, how she'd noticed something off about Mary, 
but never imagined the extent of it. My sister had been my rock during those dark times, even though she didn't know the full story until much later. Trinity, on the other hand, was relentless. She showed up at my house the following day, tears in her eyes, begging for forgiveness. She said she just wanted us to be a family, to have what she never got to have growing up. It broke my heart, but I had to remind her of the boundaries I'd set. I told her I needed space to think about everything. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about the past, about how Mary had manipulated everyone around her, how she'd convinced some people that I was the one lying during the legal battles. It was a nightmare that had haunted me for years, and now it was all coming back because of Trinity's actions. The day after, I got a text from Mary. My blood ran cold seeing her name pop up on my phone. She had the audacity to write that she missed me and hoped we could put the past behind us. I couldn't believe it. After everything she'd done, she still played the victim, still tried to worm her way back into my life. I blocked her number immediately, but the damage was done. My mind was racing, and I felt like that scared teenager all over again. I had to take a long drive just to clear my head, ending up at the old park where I used to escape to when things got too much at home. The next day, things took an even more shocking turn. I found out from my parents that Mary had been spreading rumors around town, painting me as the bad guy for abandoning my daughter at her birthday party. My parents were furious, not just because of the lies, but because they'd fought tooth and nail to keep me safe from Mary all those years ago. They reminded me of the strength it took to come forward at 16, to stand up in court, and how I couldn't let Mary control the narrative now. I decided to meet with Trinity again to try and explain why I had to keep my distance from Mary. We met at a coffee shop, a neutral place where we could talk. But as soon as I saw her, I knew something was off. She was fidgeting, avoiding eye contact, and then she dropped the bombshell. Trinity confessed that Mary had been coaching her on what to say, how to act, to get me to agree to the reunion. She'd been manipulated, just like everyone else. I was outraged. How could Mary still have this hold over people, over my own daughter? I told Trinity that I loved her, but I couldn't be a part of this toxic cycle. I needed to protect myself, and she needed to understand that. It was one of the hardest conversations I've ever had, but it needed to be said. Now, here's where karma comes into play, subtly righting the wrongs. The owner of the coffee shop overheard our conversation he was a guy I went to high school with, someone who knew Mary's reputation. He'd seen her around town, spinning her tales, and he'd had enough. Without me knowing, he'd recorded Mary's recent rant in his shop, where she bragged about manipulating Trinity and trying to get back at me for the past. He sent me the recording, and suddenly, I had the proof I needed to clear my name. I haven't decided what to do with the recording yet, but just knowing it exists has lifted a weight off my shoulders. For now, I'm focusing on repairing the relationship with Trinity, making sure she understands the gravity of the situation. My girlfriend flirts with swapping partners, so I confront her and she admits to texting the guy. We're rebuilding trust, but he's just been dumped. I, 26-year-old male, have been in a relationship with my girlfriend, 26-year-old female, since high school. It will be about eight years now, and we have been living together for the last two years. Everything was going great, apart from a few arguments that happened to everyone in a relationship. This discussion started when we heard a rumor about two out of the six couples, who we know as acquaintances and meet them occasionally on birthdays, anniversaries, etc., who regularly hang out together, actually exchanged partners for a night. Ever since we heard about this, I have seen my girlfriend getting excited when talking about it calling things such as these very normal and happening all the time. According to her, it's okay for them to do it and spice up their love life a bit. She hasn't outright told me that she wants to do it, but I can sense it with the way she talks about it in a very positive tone. Am I the idiot? Am I the jerk? For directly telling her that it's not normal for me and I won't ever participate in things such as these. And if she even thinks she wants to sleep with someone else, she should break up with me before doing that because I will never be okay with it. Edit. 
I love her just as much as she loves me and one day want to marry her. I don't think she will ever do it once I told her I won't. She didn't cheat on me. I don't think she ever intended to cheat on me. It's just that I made my point and mentioned breaking up quite sternly that left her teary-eyed, which made me feel like a jerk. Edit two. In eight long years, we have never had any trust issue, not even a red flag. Simply nothing that could make either of us feel something's wrong. This discussion didn't just happen out of the blue. A mutual friend simply happened to tell us about the couple swap at a party whilst pointing to both the couples who were on the dance floor at that time. So people who are actually suggesting that my girlfriend was probably already cheating on me and this idea had originated in her brain after she cheated on me are wrong. It never happened. We both were surprised when we heard about it. It's just how she later reacted to the couple swap is what started to bother me. While I outright in my mind rejected it as doing that was not my cup of tea, it probably gave birth to a new fantasy in my girlfriend's mind who would discuss the couple swap scenario with great excitement for the next 15 days. It was after probably the fourth time discussing how couple swapping is so common and happens all the time that I kinda snapped and went harsh on her to tell her that it's a strict no from my side. Edit three. For people who are telling that it should be the other way around and I should be breaking up with her, the intention is not to break up. And what should I break up for right now? She hasn't done anything. If thinking was a crime, all of us would be behind bars. What I wanted to convey was that I will never be okay with her sleeping with someone else. It's just not me. And if at any point in time she feels she needs someone else to do it with, then instead of cheating on me, she should respectfully break up with me first. It was just a heads up. Also, I plan on having a conversation with her tonight. Let's see how it goes. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I have done a couple of short polyamorous relationships and over a dozen more committed ones. I have tried switching both ways, from poly to monogamous and monogamous to poly. And I can safely say that the switch never works. If we started as polyamorous, it must remain so. If we started as monogamous, then I just wanna move on to a new cast of characters if that seems to fail. Trying to keep the romance high after a big switch like that feels like torture or insanely annoying at best. Comment two, I know this isn't your question, but I'm just saying, don't ever do this. She probably wants to experiment and you might be tempted to give in. And in today's world, this is more accepted, but this never ends well. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a wild few days and I've got some updates for you. So after our big argument about the whole couple swapping thing, things got really tense between my girlfriend and me. We've been together since high school and I thought we knew everything about each other, but her reaction to this rumor really threw me for a loop. I remember back in our senior year, she had this phase where she was super into reading romance novels. She'd get lost in those stories. And sometimes I wondered if she was craving more excitement than our small town life could offer. But we were young and life was simple. We never had any major issues, just the usual couple fights here and there. Fast forward to two nights ago, we were at another party with the same group of friends. The atmosphere was charged, probably because everyone knew about the partner swap rumor. I could tell my girlfriend was on edge and I was too, honestly. We both avoided the two couples involved like the plague. Then, out of nowhere, one of the guys from those couples came up to us and started chatting. He was being super friendly, but I could see where the conversation was heading. Sure enough, he brought up the swap and I saw my girlfriend's eyes light up. It was like she couldn't help herself. She started asking questions and they were getting into details. I felt sick to my stomach. I pulled her aside and reminded her about our conversation. She got defensive, saying she was just curious but I could tell there was more to it. We left the party early and the car ride home was silent. The next day, she tried to act like nothing happened, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. We've been living together for two years and I thought I knew her better than anyone, but now I was starting to doubt everything. I decided to confront her. I needed to know if this was just a fantasy 
or if she was seriously considering it. She broke down, admitting that the idea excited her, but she swore she hadn't done anything and didn't plan to without my consent. I was relieved, but also heartbroken. We had a long emotional talk about our relationship and what we both wanted out of life. It was clear we were at a crossroads. I told her I loved her, but I couldn't be in a relationship where I was constantly worried about this kind of thing. Then came the bombshell. She confessed that a few months back, she had been texting with one of the guys from the swapping couples. Nothing had happened, but she realized she was tempted. She was crying, saying she was sorry and that she never meant to hurt me. I was stunned. We had never had any trust issues before, and now this? I felt like my whole world was crashing down. But I also knew I had to stay calm. We had to figure this out. We spent the next day apart, both of us thinking about what to do next. I went for a long walk, trying to clear my head. I thought about all the good times we had, all the plans we made. It was hard to imagine my life without her. When I got back, she was waiting for me. She had made a decision. She said she loved me too much to put me through this. She was going to cut ties with those friends and focus on us. She wanted to prove that she was committed to our relationship. I was relieved, but I knew it wouldn't be easy. Trust is hard to rebuild, but I was willing to try if she was. And now, for the subtle justice part. Remember the guy she had been texting? Well, turns out his girlfriend found out about their little chats. She wasn't as forgiving as I was. She dumped him on the spot and made sure everyone in our friend group knew why. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day. 